Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and thank you very much for all your likes, shares, subscribes, and all of your comments. We really do value it. Please do keep commenting, sharing, liking, or giving us feedback and suggestions for what content to make next. Which leads me on to another video. So this keyboard here, so the delightful DS Jazz 1105 Ki is the new touchscreen keyboard from Hype Vision. Now it's a bit of a hybrid keyboard compared to the fully touchscreen DS1600 Ki. This is a hybrid one of touchscreen with built-in LCD panel with keyboard, keypad, and the joystick. So all of our, obviously, PTZ controllers contain the joystick, but this is a little bit different as a hybrid one. So you've got that traditional I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds very satisfying. Clunky key format for easy key selection for your CCTV operator, combined with a touchscreen, um, which allows you to have that visual element, but also you can have the video control on there. Now on the back of this, if I just bring it a little bit closer, on the back of this keyboard, let me just bring this camera closer for you. So on the back of this keyboard, you've got LAN connection, PoE connection, so it is uh, able to be powered via PoE if you so choose. You've got the on off button there, separate 12 volt PSU which comes with the unit. So if you don't have PoE, just a standard network connection, don't fear, you can use the 12 volt PSU that comes with the unit inside the box. A ground in loop. You've also got RS45, USB for import, export, etc. VJ and HDMI connection. So like our 1600 Ki, you are able to connect a extension monitor onto this. So I can simply connect the HDMI cable into this monitor and use that as a control monitor. Now you can either mimic the screen, so two operating modes mimic, or have that as a separate one, which I'll show you where the setting is shortly. And then you've got your mic in and your line out. So you're able to connect a desktop microphone into this, which allows you then to broadcast audio to an appropriate device, um, like an NVR, DVR output or an IP camera with the speaker connected, etc. So you are able to connect like a standard uh, desktop mic style into this to control that. As you can see there, so it is got a, you know, it is lit up on here, clunky key format, joystick on there, so twist to zoom uh, with the core buttons on there, but. It's that very old uh, familiar feel to the keyboard, which is really, really nice. Now, in, in price wise, compared to the 1600 Ki, this is a little bit more cost effective. Um, again, the 1600 is what I class as a premium keyboard, but some of the operators we work with don't like the full format touchscreen. For me, I absolutely love it. Um, I guess I'm technology led and I absolutely love the use of technology, but I can understand some people's points. They do prefer this nice keyboard so you can call like two monitor like five camera and then use it in that kind of legend um the old uh, legacy way if, if you so much prefer um, but again we'll run through that in a minute i'm going to move the camera over uh, so a face down so i can show you just quickly walk you through the functions and features and then i'll show you it working with our decoder and video wall format that we've got set out up there now this video was suggested by a customer, um, so Alex, thank you, we'll tag you in the post um, shortly. Um, but thank you very much for the suggestion and the feedback around this. It does have a web browser as well, so like all things, if you don't want to program it via the front touchscreen, you are able to program it via the web browser, so you can do that as well. For purposes, I'll probably show you the web browser because it makes more sense. So I'll just transfer you over now, show you the functionality of the web browser, and then we'll come back and see some of the interaction with the keyboard. Stay tuned, folks. Okay, so we're gonna log into the device now. So I've opened up a standard web browser, Internet Explorer. It is connecting via HTTPS, HTTPS, sorry. So you should, or you may have to accept the risk or the certificate, etc., depending on your network setup. So we're gonna quickly log in. So the first thing to know is under system management, the hardware serial number, and then obviously the firmware device version there. Now this currently is the latest firmware. I just checked before making this video. That isn't currently a new release, but always make sure that you do upgrade your devices to the latest firmware via the UK or EU portal. User management, you can add in users as required. System maintenance, standard, restart, default, 
input, export, configuration files, etc. Security settings, SSH, you'll only really be using that as a debug via your supplier, you know, in conjunction with Hike Vision Tech Support, to be honest. Or SADP, if you enable it, it allows SADP within this device to scan the network to find the devices. So, network management, simply DHCP or input the static IP address that you require. Serial port settings, like I mentioned, you've got RS-45 and RS-232. Depending on what your application needs are, you can actually input as required and control devices directly from those ports. Back to device management, I've already added an NVR here. But what we are going to do is add a turbo DVR in. So I'm going to click on add. So give it a name. So turbo DVR. Password. Now the verification code is the Hike Connect verification code. So if you're using Hike Connect and you've got verification code enabled um, or the stream encryption code, you need to input that code there, which is what I've done. Now, the other option you can tick is this Add Video Record Output tab. Now, if I tick this, it essentially adds the HDMI and VGA from the back of the Turbo DVR to the keyboard and allows me to control those outputs from the keyboard. Now that's quite powerful, really, really convenient uh, for your customer. If you've got a monitor connected to the back of the device, NVR, DVR, and you would like to control it via the keyboard. The one thing I would point out, if you add a device locally via the keyboard interface, so if you're doing this via the keyboard, when you select that option, it will actually give you a warning and say, we don't recommend doing that, um, but you are able to do it. I don't know why they don't recommend you doing it. There must be an impact on performance, or it could be that you're fighting control um, via another method, perhaps. But we're gonna, for tax purposes, we are gonna accept the add video recorder output enabler and click OK. Now we've added the device. So in our device tree, we've got our standard NVR and our turbo DVR both on our network okay so using the SADP if you wanted you can click on add SADP type your username and password to the device select them and you can simply add them via this method also uh, or do the manual add like I did now each device you've added if you click edit you can see the device ID number so that's how we select which device we're going to operate and you can also add in IP cameras or PTZ directly. So we can either add them via the centralized device or as a separate device there, IPC, IP dome directly. So it's really which, which how your application is gonna work and what suits you. Now, if we go to channel management, he, here are all your input channels. So starting at 33, um, you can see there, channel 33 would be the first camera on NVR that we've added. And you can, if I scroll down or go through the pages, you can see where I've added the Turbo DVR there. So you've got channels 22, if I go to the last page, so 25, 26, 27. So these are the channel numbers here, which relate to the device that you've added. Now you can edit these. So what you can do is export this and put the password in there, one, two, three, four, five, six, just as a test, seven, eight. Sorry. Wrong password. Now, if I open this as an Excel, enable editing, you can see there, the channel number, the device ID, etc., on this sheet that we've actually brought in. So I could, in theory, so the password's not shown, so that's okay. You can actually move these around. So if you wanted that to be channel one, you can reorganize these channels here. So you just simply change the channels around, save it, and then import it. So I could simply change that to channel one, two, three. Oh, that's already it. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can go through, save it. Then once you've saved it, import it back, which would reorientate all that um, into the order that you want. So you don't have to go by the order. It's imported via the NVR DVR. You can export, change the order around, and then re-import it. So that's nice and simple. 
What it also allows you to do is what if you set up a really complicated system, export this and save it. So if you ever have to default it or replace the keyboard for an unlikely scenario, you can simply import this file back in and it saves you a lot of time, especially if it's a complicated system that's set up already. Okay, so what we can also do is click edit and you can change the channel number there. It's easier to do it for the XL. You can change the name if you want to give it a new name. You can select stream type mainstream or substream and then the transmission protocol that's appropriate to your application. Me, I would always leave them as mainstream, but you can, if you have network issues or you really want to drop it to the substream of that product, you can drop them all to substream, click OK, and then that would be the image that is pulled through into the keyboard or the output HDMI VJ connected to the keyboard. So it's a very, very simple thing to do. OK. Moving on to the output channel. You can see on the output channel here where I added my um, DVR in. I've got output channel one is the CVBS output. Output two is the HDMI output. And again, click and edit. I can change the output numbers. Um, what I, I haven't added a decoder into this yet. So if I go back to the input channel. Sorry. Device management. Add device name decoder because you can also do this through a decoder passcode I think it's that one Yes, added. So I've also added a decoder now. So it's a single channel 6901 network decoder. But again, you could have the 6904, 6908, 6916, so on and so on, and multiple decoders, which will allow you to effectively control a whole video smart wall with this. Now, if I go back to channel management and output channel, so I've got my two um, devices or my two outputs from those devices that we've already added here. And then on the camera group, I can actually make a group of cameras. So add, you can call it a name, so DVS test. Interval 30 seconds, I can put 10 seconds as the minimum. And I can select four cameras as a group, click on OK. And that effectively creates a group and I can actually put a group on cycle. So it sends a group of cameras to an output. So a decoder output or the HDMI connected to the keyboard and shows that as a group. And you can keep making groups up. So you can click another one and give it another name, etc. And just keep making groups up. You can have more cameras in it, less cameras. And each group has its own ID. So it allows you a really quick option, especially if, you're, if you've got four critical cameras that overview a site, you can call group one up to the display and it'll show all four cameras in that group rather than selecting them individually into a display quadrant. So it's really, really powerful. Okay, so the next part of this. Okay, just one thing to touch on. If you are adding a decoder like I just have, make sure you go into the decoder itself. Now, lots of videos we've done on a decoder already, but make sure decoding configuration, I always make sure auto switch stream type is enabled and click save. And make sure, obviously, all the parameters will be set up. But under video wall configuration, if you've got a one channel recorder here, let's just get rid of those and thing. Make sure, so I can simply make this, because it's only one HDMI. I can simply drag this across there, change resolution configuration to 4K, because it's a 4K monitor, click OK. Make sure you've dragged the monitor output across to make sure when we do the second part on the keyboard that this is going to work. A lot of people forget that they have to configure the keyboard itself. And the video wall, I've actually added nothing, so we're reliant completely on the keyboard to do its operation. But going back to configuration, the only bit that's missing on this uh, web interface, which you do have to do on the keyboard itself, and this is where we've had the most um, questions around this keyboard, using a decoder is how to can add the video uh, output of the decoder um, to the keyboard. You can't do it currently through this web browser. It's called, it's class as a region, which I'll transfer you over to the camera now, and then you will see via the uh, local touchscreen how that 
is configured. It's a very simple process, but it's one that we feel important to introduce to you. So I'm going to transfer you back to the camera now. That's essentially the programming complete if you are using the web browser. The rest of this now relies on the touchscreen communication itself through the keyboard. So stay tuned and I'll transfer you back over. Okay, I've tried to adjust the camera as best I can so you can see the screen here. On the touchscreen itself, you can log in as the user. So under the switch mode here, you've got a couple of modes. You've got system, which allows you to set all of the, a lot of the detail that we talked about previously. So network, hardware, etc. Go back. You've got serial port, Hike Central, so I can log into my Hike Central system like I can with the 1600KI. iSecure, we're not going to show that because it's not a, a function we use here in the UK. And then keyboard function. So the keyboard function is the function that allows us to log in and use the keyboard. So I'm going to quickly remember this function. Okay, so we've logged into the keyboard now and you, you're presented with the functions. So device, user, channel, region and macro. So you can run macros and um, program macros to run. So on a macro, I can click add macro, give it a name. So test, hopefully you can still see this. And then I can enter commands. So you can see there region. So if you look at the supported keys there, so you can type region like a whole set of uh, commands which it prompts you there click save and that will allow you to run a macro and that effectively execute those commands so you can go like region so enter the command there enter a number first one region uh two mon camera group so one camera group uh four-way multi click save Uh, da, 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 da. there you go so effectively I've saved a macro in there now and you can build up those macros um, as required for your system or application that was just a test one of course but a lot you know allow you to build up as you require okay so home so there's the macros like I said, the devices here, so you can see the three devices that we've added in. So the NVR, Turbo DVR, plus the decoder there. It's pretty straightforward so far. I can link it to a user. So if I want to link a specific NVR to a user, I can click link, select my user, and then link my user or users. So on my list, I can link all of those users to that device, which means only the users that are logged in are able to then use that device. So it's like a permissions based thing. Those users that have those devices selected are able to see command those devices. So that's a linkage a method effectively. And the user, I can see my users here. Um, and then I can add it in. You can see device number three. So the admin's got control of all of the devices, as you would expect. User one has no control yet because they're not linked, but I can easily add a user, type a new password in for this user, and then effectively assign devices to it. So different users with different privileges. Channel, as we've already seen, you, you've got input channels and output channels. Um, this is the same effectively as the web browser, so you can switch between output channels, and then obviously the camera group is the one we set up earlier. So go back to the input channel, and then effectively click preview so if I click preview on the right hand side it gives you a picture in picture of that camera and again if I do that to any of them oh, that was the one that was offline so again you can see there I've had to turn the lights off because of the uh, to be able to so you can see the keyboard effectively okay so really simple to use go back home if I go back to admin oh sorry switch mode system where I talked earlier about the uh, a, the ability to do the HDMI screen so it mimics this or it's separate. Under hardware, you've got some auto sleep never, transparency, external display. So the external display is sync or async. If I click sync, it shows you exactly what's on this keyboard screen here. If I choose async and click save, it will become a separate monitor output 
and, and not show you the menu screen. So that's how you select menu, non-menu screen. So we'll click it as synced. And then the resolution, you can choose the one that's appropriate to your monitor, brightness, click save. And then obviously you can have alarms coming through as well from the devices, click save. So effectively set it up. So time, auxiliary keys, so key F1, key F2 you can change format storage maintenance and then about so it's effectively very similar to the web browser function okay so to control a camera via this touchscreen keyboard here so if i just go into keyboard mode and just log in so i can go to if i just select channel and we've got there you can see the keys here if i select zero monitor so basically when you go zero mon and it comes up with a local live view i can actually do this so select the camera so let's say two cam press the x key there and it goes back to the local live view and then i can just go next previous and it'll cycle through my cameras or i could go 12 cam and then again if it's a ptz like this i can use the ptz control and actually command the ptz at the same time i've also got like instant playback so again if it's linked to an NVR DVR, I can do playback through there. PTZ commands, so I can call different presets if they're saved. Patrols and patterns. And obviously I can just select the camera directly from this list as well. Like I said, with that camera group there, I can actually select that camera group and it'll call that four cameras every 10 seconds as a dwell um, also. So you can do all of that functionality through the keyboard. So you can use it as a touchscreen keyboard like that, um, or I can go simply call another camera. So 12 cam X up there, and then obviously I can choose any camera I want. So uh, like 37 cam, oh, it doesn't exist. Four cam, so you can see. Very simple to do through that touchscreen keyboard. Now I figured it out again. And you've got all of the um, functions here. Again, to use the decoder, which is really important, uh, X out of there. So what you'll see, if I just swing you round, you'll see that's our decoder um, video wall there. Nothing currently displayed on it. So using the um, keyboard itself, so keyboard itself, you see this region button so if i click region i'm going to delete what's in there because we don't actually need that delete yes now when you first use this you have to create what we call a region so click on add video wall we'll call it i'm just going to call it one for you can call it whatever you want effectively but just for test purposes we'll call it video wall one now all i'm going to do is go one enter one enter one enter one enter that's the simplest way to get a decoder added to the keyboard so it, it's basically where does it start it's like uh, rows and columns but there's only one output so i'm just easy to do that but you could have it two by two four by four etc whatever meets your application click ok so we've now edited ed, edited 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 this click on edit and i could edit it again if i wanted click on config and it goes straight to that uh, region, so ID1, but you could call it DVS for instance. Now, you'll see the plus key in the middle of the screen. Hit the plus key. Now, I have to link the video wall output to a decoder output. So, it's, this is where you do the linkage action. So, we're going to control HDMI 1 of the decoder we added and click OK. That has now added decoder 1 to region 1. So, region 1 is linked to decoder output 1. Following me so far? Pretty straightforward. Now I can go back to the main screen, go back, and now we're done. Now, to control region one, as we call it, you simply go one region. Now that brings up the decoder video wall. So monitor one output of the decoder, which is that one. So I can select it, because I want it, just press it. And you can already see there's a four-way split in that decoder. Now, as soon as I've linked it, you can see there's four videos or three videos coming through 
from the keyboard because of the control mechanism I've just done on here. Now I can select simply using my finger. What I can do is press on there and now I can select that. I don't want a four way split, I want a nine way split. So I can go nine multi and you can see now it's gone to a nine way split. Again, using the keyboard control, I can select in here and I can go camera two, camera three, camera four, camera one, camera 12, camera 13, camera 14, 15, 16. So you can see my video wall follows the keyboard setup via that touch screen there. Now, if it's a PTZ, I can actually select one of these cameras. So if I highlight PTZ, I know PTZ is 12, go up there, up, back up to the screen, and you'll see that middle one there, when I do the joystick control now, you can see that's already moving. It's variable speed control. You can see very low latency using the keyboard. I overshot that, I'll just slowly bring it back. So you can see that's how you interact with the video wall. So if I go back to here. So when I finished on there, I can click exit. Now what I can do, click exit on that. If I had multiple outputs on a decoder, so I could go to region and it would go to the second video wall region. And I can go on and on and on as required. So wall two, monitor one. So you can keep on going with this. Um, as far as you as you need effectively like four mon put it back to a four-way split for multi and I'll last back to a four-way split but again depending on how you set the key keyboard up with all the different uh, outputs on the decoder or regions then you can simply do that if I go back to this screen here and click X again so zero mon no, sorry zero mon is the local keyboard zero one mon is the keyboard and uh, the monitor that's linked to the turbo dvr so like i said before or zero two monitor zero two monitor is the keyboard is the monitor output of the turbo dvr so like i said when you want to take control of an output of a dvr so that's next to me here similar i can go four multi and it puts it to a four-way split now the limitation on this currently is some devices allow you to choose the different cameras this turbo dvr doesn't so if i select i wanted to select camera 26 in there it, it doesn't let me it says operating failed so all i can do with the turbo dvr effectively is change the layout like so but it doesn't allow me to take much more control than that if it was a ptz i could select that and it would let me do the ptz control um but effectively that's it so hopefully that's a nice little walkthrough of this uh, keyboard okay so i hope you enjoyed that video and like i said it, with the touchscreen keyboard there i bought the that camera that, that's effectively connected to this nvr which is added to this keyboard and all I'm doing now is view that camera and I've got full PTZ control through there as well. So it's really nice and powerful. Very responsive if you knew how to control a PTZ, which I'm not that good at. Hopefully you understand how that keyboard can interact with it, give you a really good insight. Thank you, Alex, for the suggestion. I'm glad we did it because it really did help refresh me as well. Any questions, please leave them in the comments. Hopefully you understand the keyboard a little bit more. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, stay subscribed. Press the alarm bell for future notifications. We'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thank you.